Hello everyone and welcome to Creative Life TV. I'm Linda Peterson and today's show is all about getting you ready for fall. I know it's hard to believe but fall is just around the corner. It's time to get ready with all those fall projects and when I think of fall I think of beautiful bright vibrant rich color like sunflower yellow or fiery orange. Those colors really get me inspired. And so I'm going to use those colors and combine them with some of my favorite techniques to help get your fall projects underway. First, I'll share with you how to make a fabulous keepsake using a wooden shadow box. Next, a few simple jewelry making techniques is all you'll need to create this vintage inspired acorn pendant. It's a make it and wear it kind of project. And finally, have you noticed the mixed media collage trend taking the craft world by storm? Well, we'll head off into the studio to create this sunflower inspired wall art with some of my favorite mixed media techniques. So go grab your pen and paper. I have a lot of techniques and projects to share with you right now, coming up on the fabulous fall episode of Creative Life TV. When you think of fall, what comes to mind? Cooler temperatures, or maybe you're glad the kids are back in school. Do you think of the fall colors? You know, I love spring because I love all those fresh colors, but I love fall for all its vibrant, rich, deep colors. The sunflower yellows, the luscious reds, the fiery oranges. Those are the colors that get me inspired. So first up, I'm going to share with you how to create a memory keepsake box. It's inspired by fall colors, but it's going to last for years to come. So join me in the studio, won't you? Well, I hope you have your pen and paper handy because this particular project is full of techniques. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to start on our frame. And what I have is a wooden uh, shadow box frame here. And you can see that I've already started on it. Uh, you don't need any paint. You can certainly use paint for this project, but I'm actually going to use pigment ink. And I've used this one so much that uh, it came off the little cube. But all you have to do is just rub it along the surface of the wood. Because we're going for a distressed look, um, you don't have to completely cover it. You can let some of the wood show through. But you're going to want to make sure that you cover the top, the sides here, and then the inside as well. And uh, paint anything back here to kind of give that a nice finished look. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to stamp on the wood with some rubber, uh, with a rubber stamp and some Distress ink. So this is pretty simple. And I'm using a really big scroll stamp, and I just have it actually anchored onto the ruler that I use quite a bit um, because this is a pretty big stamp, and I don't have a block that is actually big enough to hold the stamp. So my ruler works really good. So ink your stamp, and then you're going to stamp right onto the wood. Make sure that you rotate your stamp so um, it goes every which way here. Let's do something this way. There we go. And you can ink the sides. If you can get to the inside, you can certainly put a pattern on the inside. So 
something like that. You can also cover the front of this if you want with some pattern paper. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to distress it even more. Um, I love this because it's going to really bring out this rust color that I'm working with right now. And I'm just going to take and rub the sides real light touch. This wood isn't completely smooth, so just by kind of stroking over it like this, I'm picking up some of the imperfections in the wood, some of the distress marks. Okay, and you're going to go all the way around your frame and do as much as you like. And to get into, not really good. To get into the inside here, what I would do is I would use a makeup sponge like this, daub it on, and then you can rub it on the inside of your frame. You don't have to worry about the bottom. The bottom we're going to cover with paper. If you have some kind of a acrylic sealer, maybe some decoupage medium, you can uh, go over the top of this when this dries and seal the wood. You don't have to, but sometimes it's nice to put a little satiny finish. So now what we're going to do is we're going to set this aside and we're going to work on our letters. To embellish the letters, I'm actually going to use these chipboard letters as a guide. And the reason is, is because when I bought the chipboard letters, um, when I opened it, then I came to realize that there's only one L in the package and you can't spell fall with just one L. I could spell love, but I want to do a fall project. So I'm going to just use these as a pattern and you know, I want to thank Heidi Borchers of the Eco Heidi Show because she has taught me so much about recycling and it's kind of a joke around the house that now we don't throw anything away. So you might uh, have maybe uh, some cardboard from, um, this is actually from one of the UPS Priority Mailboxes. It's uh, one that I had left over that somebody sent me. So any kind of cardboard, and I would suggest something thick like cardboard, not um, something just like a cereal box or anything like that. It's a little too thin. I like my uh, letters to have a little bit of dimension. And what I've done is I've applied some double stick tape here. These letters are super easy, but they're fun to do. So I'll just take off the top of the tape there, and then um, you're gonna put your paper down. This kind of saves a step from having to um, put paper down on such a, a small intricate letter. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace my letter with, um, you can have, use a pencil, but I'm gonna use a needle tool because um, I'm actually going to poke down into the cardboard and it kind of weakens it. It makes it easier to cut through. So trace all the way around. It doesn't have to be totally perfect and you don't have to go through the bottom, clear to the bottom, but you do want to have some kind of a guide there and you can see I don't know if I can show this to you, it might not pick it up, but I've got a real faint outline of the L. And then I'm going to come in with my craft knife and pair of scissors and just kind of cut this out and it'll cut all the way through. And so I've already done that to the letter A here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, sand the sides. And when you do that, I like that because one thing it does is it distresses the sides, but it also lays the paper down and that way you have a, a nice pretty edge. Okay, so go all the way around this with your sandpaper. It'll kind of highlight the edge. If you wanted to, you could paint this. I like using the double-sided tape because um, it dries quick. Well, it doesn't really dry at all. It's just really quick and it's a lot less messier than using a, a decoupage medium. I learned that through one of my bloopers. All right, now we're going to apply some of the distressing and I think I'm going to actually keep my hands clean for this. 
get a little makeup sponge and then just go over the edges got a little dark there but that's alright let me tap off some of this color here because I'm just going to lightly go over this green and I just want to dull it down a little bit kind of shadow the inside of that A like that. You're going to do that for all of your letters. All the letters are pretty much done the exact same way. Now we're going to go for some embellishing. So I have a piece of raffia and I'm going to just double up. It just makes it uh, go a little quicker. And I'm just going to wrap some raffia. This just adds a little bit of texture to the letter. You can substitute some rope or yarn or well, anything ribbon anything that you want to and let's give this a little tie on the back it's okay if it's a little bumpy on the back um, it's a very dimensional project knot it up and let's snip off the excess so we've got a little raffi around there that's giving it a little bit of a texture and now I'm going to add um, this little die cut flower that I die cut out of some denim and while you're die cutting this is the die cut that I used you might want to die cut um, some shapes in some I've got some newspaper here I've got an old t-shirt that had a a good area that I could a square that I could die cut some flowers and then I've die cut I've die cutted some um, denim as well if you don't have a die cut in a flower that's okay just substitute uh, maybe a paper flower or uh, a flower from the floral department that'll work just fine but you want a large flower and you want a small flower so while you're die cutting might as well go ahead and die cut all of these different um, mediums here so decorative paper newspaper I've got again t-shirt and some denim and there happens to be in this die cut a smaller one so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my glue let's see what did I do with my glue there it is and I would arrange I would look at my letters here and I would arrange so that all my flowers weren't in a row. Some would be at the bottom, some would be at the top, and so on. But um, just to show you how this finishes out. I'll put a little bit of glue. Stick your flower on. And then I'm going to add a little button. I've got a little brown button. And that's going to be how you're going to complete all of your letters. And let me show you real quick what those letters look like when they're finished. The next element in the project is working with the photo. So you'll want to gather a photo that matches obviously the color of the paper that you're using. And if you don't have a photo that matches the color of paper you want to use, change it to a black and white and then it'll match anything. The photo that we used in the um, finished project is color and this one is the black and white version of that. But I'm going to show you how I distressed it and it's the same technique on both photos, whether it's color or whether it's um, a black and white. And I do, I like to go around my edges of the photos because I really like that shabby distressed look. So I have an old sanding block here. This is the ones that you get um, at the uh, beauty supply stores. <laughs> it's pretty old. Um, it's one of the softer or the, the, the finer grits, but I like it because it's, it won't actually dig into the paper. And that's why I keep this old one around. So you're just going to go over the edges and sand and scratch just as much of the photo 
that you want. This just kind, kind of adds a shabby and distressed look. Looks like I scratched the whole photo there. So go all the way around. Can you see that? Okay. It really helps to blend it into the background uh, of the paper that we're using. And the other thing that I can do, you can see that I've already matted this on a piece of paper, but um, I also went around this with my Distress ink and I distressed the edges also to give it that shabby look. Now we're going to do a little bit of embellishing here on the photo. So what I have is just a strip of denim and I've cut it about, oh it's a little less than half an inch, a little more than a quarter inch. And you can see that I've got um, both of the sides are on a diagonal. So I'm just going to fold this up and I'm going to grab my stapler here. I'm going to staple it. Whoops, I think I'm going to staple it to the other side. Oops, sorry. Changed my mind. I'm going to staple it to the other side. I like using staples in my scrapbooking. I think because we're using so much organic type materials, um, I like that it's kind of industrial and shabby looking. And then I'm going to finish this uh, picture off. I've got two little buttons here. I'm going to grab my glue again. There we go. I'm just going to glue a couple little buttons to the front of the picture. Right? And you're going to set this aside to dry and next we're going to work on the flower. We're creating our final embellishment, which is the big focal flower that we're going to put at the top of the frame. And as I mentioned earlier, I have lots of different flowers cut out of one die cut of different materials. So I've got denim, and I've got t-shirt material, and I've got some newsprint. You can have patterned paper, whatever you can find. It could be um, an old shirt that, with a print that you like, anything you can die cut. Or you can use uh, a pre-purchased um, paper flower or maybe a silk flower. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take some of these embellishments and I'm going to alter them. So I'm going to set all the denim pieces to the side. And I'm going to grab my pigment inks here because I'm going to colorize these to blend. Now some of them I'm going to leave the natural color and some I'm going to have um, them colored. So I'm just going to rub over the top of my fabric here. I'm just going to rub over the top of the fabric and um, you don't have to even worry about getting it completely covered. It, it looks really nice when you've kind of hit and miss or when some pieces are a little darker than others, but you just want to add a little bit of color. You might want to do that to both sides like I've done here. And you're going to do the exact same thing to your newsprint. So I added a different color to your newsprint. Now to assemble the flower, super easy, but the key again is layers. Layers and layers and lots of layers. So come back in and in between each layer you're going to want to put a little daub of glue and you're going to want to stack and offset just like this. And you get the idea. Okay. And then maybe a natural colored floppy flower. The paper also helps when we crunch this up a little bit. You'll see it kind of keeps its shape. Something like that. So when you get all of your layers, maybe 8 to 10 layers, even more if you want, then you're going to finish that off by gluing a button in the center. Or you can glue a jewel or, or whatever it is you want um, you have handy. Something like this. All right. 
The other thing that I have is I have created a bow out of raffia. So we're actually going to glue our flower to the raffia bow. And let me show you how we're going to layer that all together then on our frame. So I've got my pattern paper in the back. And of course I would glue down my photo. And then my letters would go down here at the bottom and I'll stack those like, like you saw earlier. And I'll glue this to the top corner. And I'm going to add one other really cool decorative embellishment. I want to show you that here on the finished piece before we actually take a look at the finished project. And you can see these, um, all the bling that I have here. Now, this comes on a piece of acetate like this here. It's hard to see, but it's actually on a plastic backing. And all I did was I cut around that. I left it on the backing. I, it's a sticker and I haven't even taken it or removed it from the backing. And the reason is, is because the backing kind of holds it up nice and it gives it a little bit more texture. If you like bling, you can add bling. If you don't, of course, you can leave it off. But let's take a look at what our finished project looks like. Well, what I love about learning and sharing techniques is that you can take that technique and then you can use any color scheme to match your decor. So check that out if you're using a different color scheme in your home. You can get our step-by-step -step projects, our how-tos for this and all the projects that you see on today's show by visiting us on our website. Just go to lindapetersonlive.com or coolthecraft.com and check them out. Write that down so you don't forget. Now let's carry on with the fall theme and create a vintage inspired acorn pendant with a couple of findings and a few jewelry making techniques. That's all you'll need to create this make and wear project. So before we begin, I wanted to go over the materials that you'll need for this project. You'll need a ball chain or any kind of string material, whether it's leather cord, whatever you choose. I have a head pin here. My head pin actually has a little ball at the end. It's a little decorative head pin. And to make the acorn, you'll need a jump ring, a little seed bead. This is a little spacer bead, a bead cap, and then of course your faceted bead. This is the one that we're going to be using here. Um, and that will make the acorn. You'll need a metal leaf charm. And then I have about 24 inches of 20 gauge wire. Okay, I'm going to create the pendant uh, base or the focal piece of the pendant, which is going to look something like this, only a little bit smaller. And I'm going to do that by coming in about an inch from the end of the wire and making a bend. So bend it all the way around my pliers like that. And then I'm going to take the end and wrap it around. This is going to secure it into place. You can do that a couple times and then you can just snip off the end there and press it flat with your pliers. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the loop and to do this I like to massage my wire because that um, helps it to have nice flowing curves instead of harsh bends and I'm just going to run my thumb over that and bend this around like this till it comes back to the top and I'll wrap it around and I'll go back the other way. So you're going to do this a couple times. Each time you want to make your loop a different size. So you, you actually want to see three or two or three, three or four different size of loops down at the bottom. It gives just a little bit of extra something something. And remember, these instructions are going to come out in our Cool to Craft newsletter. And also, they will be on the website at lindapetersonlive.com and coolthecraft.com. So if you miss any part of today's show, um, you can watch it 24-7 on the Linda Peterson Live website. We have all my shows streaming there. So, here is your base. And now what we're going to do is we're going to attach the leaf. 
If your leaf has a hole already, that's wonderful. You can also drill a hole if you want. I'm not going to go to that much trouble. I'm just going to wire wrap my uh, leaf onto my pendant. So to do that, I'm going to use 24 gauge wire. It's thinner wire. This is copper wire and it's tarnished already. So you'll notice here that I have lots, you know, I have my leaves and what I'm doing is I'm just wrapping that wire around one of the areas. I'm bringing it back to the top and I'll wrap it around here. That's going to secure it. I'm going to bring it back to the front and down the other side. This just makes it look like it was uh, meant to be that way. A little bend in my leaf here. There we go. So it's kind of a little decorative element there. And now I have my leaf wrapped securely onto my wire. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take and we're going to wrap this onto that pendant. It's just a matter of taking your wire and wrapping it around to secure it to the base like you see here. Okay, just a couple of times and you'll want to cut that off and then tuck this wire under so that it's not sharp and it's not sticking out. Tuck that in there real good. Now let's go on to creating a little acorn. Okay, it's super duper easy to create the acorn. So you're going to come in with your head pin. Uh, like I said before, mine has a little ball at the end. It just gives it a little something something. And you're going to put on your bead, your bead cap, and then your spacer bead. You can use this exact same design to create a matching pair of earrings if you like. That'd be fun, huh? All right, and you noticed here, I didn't explain it, but you noticed that what I did is I just took my head pin and the wire I put it in my uh, round nose pliers and I bent it around to create a loop. There we go. Now I'm just going to snip the end of this loop off right there at that bend and you've made your acorn. So let me find my, there it is. jump ring here. Let's attach the jump ring and then you're going to completely close the loop. Just like that. Okay. We're going to wire wrap the jump ring then. Start a little wire here. So I'm just going to come in Threading my wire just above my leaf there. I'll give it a little twist here to secure. And the reason why I put it on a jump ring is it allows it to dangle. If I would put it directly onto that little loop that we made, it would make it kind of rigid. And I want a little bit of dangly in there. I'm just going, instead of cutting that wire off, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to coil that around, make that into a little decorative. Add that on. Oops. There we go. And wrap it back around. Coming together. Make sure that you have all of your wires tucked under. You don't want them to snag your clothes and you don't certainly don't want them to scratch anyone. So now all we have to do is attach it to our ball chain and take a look at our finished pendant. Don't you just love projects that are quick and easy and then you can make them and wear them in no time? Well if you need more ideas you might want to check out my book Beating in No Time. 
It's 35 projects, 176 pages full of color step-by-step -step photographs to give you lots of ideas to create your own designer jewelry. And if you like the look of found object and mixed media jewelry, then check out my newest book, Metal Work Jewelry. Again, 35 projects that will have you creating metal jewelry, working with copper, all sorts of fun stuff. And I really think you'll enjoy the projects in that book. Go to lindapetersonlive.com today to order your copy. Mixed Media Collage is taking the craft world by storm. That's been out for a little while, but and you may have seen these trends in magazines and paper craft stores. People are making art journals and art jewelry. Does it have you feeling a little overwhelmed? Do you think maybe you can't do it? Well, I want to share a couple of my favorite techniques with you to get you started to create your own mixed media journal. So why don't we go back to the studio and I'll show you how. I'm really excited about sharing this project with you. I'm going to share a couple of my favorite techniques with you. Um, and there is no right or wrong. So jump in, have fun, and um, keep it simple. That's what I can say for this project. This is a 12 by 6 inch art ca canvas. Um, you know, something that you would put an oil painting or an acrylic painting on. I have not put any gesso. All I'm using is decoupage medium and newsprint. So I have cut up several pieces of the newspaper um, paragraphs and I'm going to just decoupage them on to my, um, directly onto my canvas. This is laying the base for my canvas here. And of course, I use my fingers to spread out my decoupage medium. I think that's, you know, one of the greatest things about doing mixed media art is that you get to experience everything. And I love that my hands can feel the different textures and um, really get into my work. So let's finish this off here. There's no rhyme or reason. Some of my copy goes up and down. Some of it goes side to side. You just want to make sure that you cover the entire surface of your canvas and I've even left some of the edges um, hanging over. We'll fix that later. That's an easy fix. Try to put down your biggest pieces first and then fill in with your smaller pieces. That'll keep you from going crazy from having to handle all those little tiny bits and pieces of paper. So give this a good coat over the top. When you decoupage um, you can see I put the glue down onto the canvas and then I'm putting it sometimes you can put it on the back of the paper that you're applying and then put it over the top so make sure this is all completely sealed down and let this dry so once your canvas is completely dry um, I went around my canvas and I sanded the edges uh, just like this I've got a little tag left here to show you and if you'll just send, sand the edges then it'll thin the paper out and you can peel it right off it's nice neat and even over here I have some acrylic paint. I have an eggshell color and a white color. And this right here, even though it looks like white paint, is actually a glaze. Uh, glaze makes your paint translucent. And so what we're going to do is I'm just going to apply a wash, a real light white wash over the top of this. Now some areas are going to look really heavy and some areas are going to look like they have hardly any paint on them at all. That's okay. Because we're just applying um, a really interesting background and everything goes. So just kind of slap that paint on just like that. I have a big wide brush. Now here's a fun way to paint. Um, I have some plastic wrap here and what you'll do is you'll just add a little bit of the paint. This is kind of like a monotone paint. I don't want to put too much because I personally want to see some of that newsprint kind of shine through there. So Let's wad this up. And then we're just going to go over the top of this and kind of stamp. Just gives a real modeled effect. 
and you're going to do this over the whole surface then of this canvas. You can also texture with some bubble wrap or anything that you have lying around the house that you think would add an interesting texture. It can be um, the rim, maybe this is kind of large, this is a mason jar, but it could be the uh, rim of a bottle top. Anything that you want that's going to create an interesting and pleasing background. Don't Just don't overdo it. Um, and if you do, you can paint over this white again, put a new uh, coat of uh, newsprint, and you can start all over. So you're not going to make a mistake. But you're going to go over this with, a, with the white and the off-white to create a real interesting background. Now we're going to apply the focal point of our... Um, mixed media collage which is a sunflower and to do that I collect ephemera books and you can get these sometimes pretty reasonable at um, thrift stores this one happens to be from 1865 but I love it because it's got a lot of journaling a lot of writing in it I also have this sheet here that I got from a music book that's pretty old as well and so I'll have these as a available as a PDF on my website at lindapetersonlive.com now what I've done, you can see that I have already decoupaged the um, sunflower and then I used the music uh, to create my pot. But all I did really was, I, for the center, I just tore out a circle. So I cut the square uh, about the size that I wanted, the center of my flower. And I'm going to, I'm just tearing out a random circle. It doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm going to cut just with my scissors, and I'll have a pattern for this if you want to be a little bit more precise, but that really doesn't matter. I'm just cutting leaf shapes. So some of them are fat and some of them are skinny, and you're going to line those all the way up. Remember to work from the bottom up, and you're going to decoupage these on and wait for this to dry. Then we'll go on to, we've got two more techniques left. We're going to go on to the next step, and we'll begin to color our flower. This is where the fun really begins because this word's going to start to take shape and come to life and we're adding details and bringing it to life. Um, and this is where your personality is really going to take shape. So now I have three colors, or actually I have two colors of acrylic paint. I have a, a mustardy yellow and um, a warm color of red. We're gonna mix those two together and it'll make an orange. And then the white here is the glaze that makes it translucent. So side load your brush and I'm going to paint really just on the one side of the petal. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back and I'm going to just add a little bit of red on the side of my brush. And when I mix that in, I get a little bit of orange there. I'm going to come in and I'm going to add some orange down here. Just really working with the side of my brush. Okay, you're going to work this all the way around until you have your petal colored. And when you when we come back after it dries, I'll show you what that looks like, and we'll move on to our pot down at the bottom. We've accomplished so much so far, and all we've really done is we've decoupaged and we've stamped with some unusual materials and painted a little bit. So now I've already started on my um, on this pot down here, and what I have is some Distress ink, and I'm just going to rub it over. It's easier to do on this pot because um, it's such a large area, and that's why you can do this. But you're going to rub it over, and the cool thing is, is if you've applied a glossy uh, collage, or collage medium or um, a decoupage medium, it kind of makes it a little like it's a resist. And you can come back, you can put a piece of bubble wrap and then lift it off and it kind of lifts away some of the pattern there. I'm going to go ahead and finish out my um, my pot here, and then um, I'm going to work on the sunflower just a little bit more. Then we're going to go on to our final step. 
All right, before we wrap up this segment, I want to share with you one last technique, and that is coming in and using your charcoal pencil. Um, this is a pretty soft pencil, and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to outline some of my leaves here and blend with my finger. This really sets it off. It breaks up the petals, it kind of lifts the sunflower off of the page and gives it a lot of extra detail. I'll also go around with a permanent marker and give it a little bit more fine detail as well. So I'm going to outline everything, all of my elements with my charcoal pencil. I'm also going to add additional layers of texture on top. So I have things like a rubber, or not rubber stamps, I have foam stamps, I have rubber stamps. Of course you saw the technique with the bubble wrap. So look for things around the house that um, would give you an interesting texture and they could be something as simple as the top off of your paint and dip it in paint and add some little circles. Lots and lots of fun things. I'm also, my very last step will be to just decoupage a phrase on here and you can either print one out uh, from your computer or you can tear one out of a magazine. So now I'd like to show you what my finished sunflower project looks like. Did you realize it was that easy to make great collage art? Just a few techniques and you too can do it. Well, we have done so much on this show. We've been painting and stamping and gluing, collaging, decoupaging. And I hope that I've inspired you to get out your craft supplies and be creative, make some great art. Before I wrap up the show, I want to invite you to visit us on our Facebook pages at Cool to Craft and Linda Peterson Live. We would love for you to give us comments about our shows, let us know what inspires you, even send a picture of something that you've done creative. We would love to hear from you. And that's going to wrap it up for this show. I hope to see you again on another episode of Creative Life TV. And until then, have a great day, have a great week, and keep living the creative life. I'll see you again real soon. For more information on Linda's books, go to lindapetersonlive.com and order your signed copies today.